It's the Anfield rap, Neil Atkinson, Phil, blah, blah, blah. Neil Atkinson, Phil Blundell, Adam Melia and John Gibbons in association with Red's Bet. Uh, I'm going to say again, and I'm going to keep emphasising it across all of these shows on Red's Bet. If you have signed up, make sure you've selected who you want to partner with uh, so that the money can be adequately allocated as you would like. The way in which that works is Red's Bet give 50% of their losses, of your losses, their profits to fan-related causes and charities. Uh, we are partnering with them for 2018. If you do gamble, feel free to do so with them. If you don't, don't worry about it in the slightest and do be gamble aware either way, whichever way you go. Uh, we are going to be talking about basically Phil Blundell's current hobby horse and passion. And it is, Phil, that basically the next seven for Liverpool are probably the biggest standalone run of games we've had in a decade. It's ridiculous. The smallest game in the next, what, four or five weeks is Chelsea in the League Cup now. Going back five years, Chelsea at home in the League Cup would have been a game where you looked at and went, wow, this is fantastic, it's a it's a really big game. And now you're sort of thinking, what's the weakest team we can get away with playing and hopefully still qualify? And the, the sort of the change in in what this football club is about over the last few years is fantastic. We're, we're now looking at that thinking, oh, well, it's not really something we're bothered about. We've got a Champions League games, we've got a title challenge. We basically need to get to the end of this sort of seven-game period. If we get there, if we take eight points from our next four league games, we can't be below Manchester City after after eight games. Which, given that I, we looked at their, you look at their respective fixture lists at the start of the season. If you'd have been told that, if you'd have been told you're four points behind, you'd have been quite happy with it. And now you're looking at it thinking we need what two wins, two draws, and four games to be level with them after eight. That's, that's at least yeah. yeah. I thought, John, this is the this is the story. This is the situation that we've got ourselves in, and it is also the scope of the thing. I think it's quite, you know, it's certainly in the first half of the season. Just to do all the context stuff quick, it ending with City. There's the comparison of City's fixtures, which we'll come on to, but for us, there's the comparison of last season when it was a pretty mundane run of games, but we only managed to win one in this gap, and then the run that follows this: Red Star twice, an EFL game if we get through, but Huddersfield, Arsenal, Cardiff, Fulham. It's night and day, isn't it? The, this is a massive chunk of our season. Yeah, it is, but it's exciting as well, isn't it? And that's how you have to kind of view it, really. You can view it in terms of... I feel like I've got people dying around me here. Uh, well, <laughs> pray for Neil. Um, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's ways of looking at it. There's ways, you know, you can, you can say, well, oh, you know, it's... A, you know, it'd be tough for, you know, you don't want to lose to Tottenham with them, the knock-on effects and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> or you can say, well, look, the team's looking good. They're 100% so far. They look great in the summer. The, you know, an international break is, is an ideal, but, you know, in terms of when, when they might be coming back for, for what's kind of, in a, you know, in a, a kicking off earlier in the weekend. But, look, it's the same for Tottenham, and I think we'll be raring to go there. And I, I'm really looking forward to this one of games I can't wait. And, like, Phil's, like... Alluding to there, this is sort of what you're in it for, really. You'd rather be going into these big winner games feeling, you know, good and feeling positive about the team than, than worrying where your win's going to come from. This is the reward, Adam. I think in many senses, I think we have we have got to look at it like this. It can go badly wrong. It did this time last season. That's why I'm saying that. But this right now is the reward. Yeah, it is, and I think there's. I'm I'm in two minds. I guess there's. There, this is this is what we're in it for. But I sort of prefer it when this happens in February instead of um, <laughs> instead of September and October. Um, I was thinking what what it reminded me of the the, the Chelsea game being the smallest one was when um, Arsenal ended up battering us in the Carling Cup, and that was early. T- do you remember the beat? That was six January, three? wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, January 2007. So that was another time where it kind of felt like this. It was a bit like we've got too we've, we've got bigger fish to fry here. We've got too much going on. Um, um, to, to 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 be that concerned about the about the Carlin Cup, um, and and it's now the, uh, the, the the Carabao. Don't think you'll be seeing anyone at the level of Gabriel Paletta at centre back. <laughs> Do you know what I like though? I get like really obsessed with the results from the previous season, and like it's stupid because you know it's it's. It, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but I, but what worries me about our first four games is that we won all of them last year. Yeah. So I had that thing in my head where we can't do any better, and if we and if we get a draw at. You know, at Leicester, which isn't the end of the world, yeah. you know, with ten points, I'm like, oh, we're two points behind last season, and we were, and we we're meant to be kicking on, you know what yeah. I mean? Whereas we've done them now, and then we've got these games. I mean, Spurs and City away last year, we got absolutely battered. Didn't yeah. we? So, City at home, oh, City 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 sorry, yeah, but Spurs away, you know, is, is one where we and it know, was we, we lost Chelsea battered. away though. Yeah, Chelsea. That was the other one I meant. Yeah, that was the other one I meant. Thanks. And for I guess the City away thing, you, you, uh, that's in my head a bit because it was this time last season. It was the twelve thirty away after the international break, yeah. and we've got that again, which is really, you know, really unfair. Uh, feels like um, there's a big one after every single international break yeah it's like it's 
planned. It's really not just Liverpool, but all of the teams as well. Not just I'm just talking about Liverpool the twelve thirty. There's a big twelve thirty game after every international break, and that just seems weird to me. The Premier League football's back. They did it last season as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. Like a toddler. Yeah, it's something to get really excited about all week. I'm sure it's. I mean, we all know the fixture computers nonsense. Yeah. So I think I'm sure it's boiled in. Who knew Liverpool and Everton and Arsenal and Spurs are playing each other on the same weekend again for about the twenty fifth season in a row? I know. Do love Derby Day. Just on this though, you mentioned the EFL Cup there as a small game. The one thing I do think, Phil, and you know, we can argue this, we have argued this in the past, is we actually need a little bit of a run this season because we need to get a load of players now into a rhythm of playing for Liverpool because we're going to need to chop and change. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one thing I had lo- I checked last night is that the only three midweeks we've got between now and <coughs> mid-January are League Cup weeks. Yeah. Which is astonishing when you think about it. This mid January. Chan- mid January. They're the only we we at the minute we've got two blank midweeks between the what I'll be the tenth of September and FA Cup first round week uh, third round. Which is astonishing when you think about it. We're basically playing every three days unless we get knocked out the League Cup by someone. There is there is a logic that sort of says it suits us. I think there's some players that do like that that, that do like the rhythm and um, you know, we, we did that for the second half of last season pretty much and, and, and you know, obviously reap re- the rewards from it and I think we couldn't have done that with last season's squad but with, with, with this season's squad... I mean, squad, we definitely made sacrifices towards the end of last season. Like, yeah, There was yeah. like, Everton away, West Brom away, Stoke at home. We sort of made a few changes. But I'm really looking forward to that Chelsea League Cup game. I'm looking for... Because we haven't massively seen Shakiri yet, have we? We've had a couple of little cameos and he's done okay. I watched him I watched him for Switzerland. That's how much I want to, <laughs> <laughs> that's how much I want to see Shakiri. So that'd be great. great as well. Obviously, Sturridge hasn't got his start yet. You're looking at players like him. And I feel for Neil made a really good point last week about the Lallana injury, although it's a bit of a shame. It means we'll probably see Curtis Jones in the yeah, League yeah. Cup and that'd be cool. Him alongside Fabinho, you'd, you'd imagine that's his first home start at least. I think there. he might start against Southampton, you know. Because I think if yeah. he doesn't, you're asking Henderson to basically play um, Spurs away, PSG at home, and Southampton well, away at the, home in seven days. That's a. But he might do the the, the three he's been playing before. That they might need one of those games. He could, yeah, that's true. He could, yeah, I, I won't be surprised if, if Southampton. <laughs> so it was a Kev Walsh on there who made the joke that uh, Fabinho might be the first ever player who's uh, first ever home game his testimonial <laughs> which is always really funny like he might just be thinking about him like away from home and, and even Henderson he might be thinking home games you know what I mean Wijnaldum Milner and um, other fella Kang said that, that might be fine for him so you might see you might see a bit of that but anyway yeah I'm looking forward to the League Cup game they've priced it great haven't they and, yeah. and I think you know it'll be, it'll be a chance to, to see a few we haven't seen yet the, it's still without a date that that's because of policing questions um, Everyone's, no one wants to choose to do they no one wants to choose yeah. but we, I think the Tuesday it suits us Phil be fantastic because Chelsea would then play Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday which is ridiculous that's what <laughs> effectively they have two days off and then one day off and then they're playing us. They'll just and they wouldn't even play a proper team, I don't think. By Ali off front. <laughs> Kasaragi's not getting that cruel. He's always coming back and he's uh, <laughs> playing up front for them. But yeah, it's if we can get the Tuesday, it would be massive because it would take a lot of pressure off because they would definitely make a huge number of changes and they'd almost hold hands up and go right. We we need rid of this now because you. The I mean I know we're in Europe and they're in Europe, but the difference between being in the Champions League and the Europa League is is incredible. I mean I think one of the have they not got. Did they not got Kazakhstan or Azerbaijan or something, something in the group? Like that, yeah. It's um, definitely a stand. They've got somewhere somewhere a long way away that I've got no interest <laughs> in going for a weekend. Um, so if you can sort of get rid of the League Cup from their point of view, it's not the fixture list isn't as bad because they get those two free midweek crew we just talking about. Whereas if they're going midweek, 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 and then after Christmas they've got the extra round, something's got to give with them, and I think it could help us with the League Cup. It's the, the, the good thing about playing Chelsea at home at this early stage is also that if you beat them, they're out. And it's one of the teams that you look at and think they can beat us that are gone from the tournament in September. I'm very into not being in the semi-finals of the League Cup, Phil. I'm very into being into the quarter-finals of the League Cup. I'm not into the semi-finals <laughs> of the League Cup because January's a killer. And you, cause you, you, what you've just said there is absolutely right about the intensity of this now until we get through until December. And I think that everyone's sort of bought into that. And I think that when you lash those extra games in, in January, everyone's like, come on, we've, we've, you've just... See, I don't think it's actually as bad this year. I think there's a league game less this year in January. I've got a feeling. I might be wrong on this, but I, I think, think, I think the there's a game less. There is, but partially the calendar. The with semi-finals is it's too tempting to go stronger, isn't it? So, like, you know, in yeah. this game, I think you will make 10 or 11 changes. Probably 10, I think. You need, you need a, for it to be okay, you need a really easy home game in the FA Cup 
or not like the other year when we got a really easy home game in true nil. Feel, it feels John like had to go to Plymouth on a Wednesday. <laughs> it still went out. It and feels like yeah. a, 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 such a quick win to make it one leg, just uh, just one leg semi. You know, look at the draw. One leg in a neutral like, neutral venue because it'd be like it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's no, you're right because 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 the FA Cup doesn't have that neutral venue anymore. And yeah. everybody's pining for it. Yeah, yeah. The one, one leg went to night Aston Villa. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, suddenly we want that, don't we? Yeah. What the League Cup needs. I know we're going off on a tangent here. It's basically someone else to look after it. So and they do something really good. I think the problem is because it's the FA as well. It's the football league, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. So well, they're they're just well, well, they're stupid then. Got no excuses. <laughs> yeah, no excuses. Forget everything. I've just said. <laughs> what, yeah, where, 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 yeah. Oh, they should be thinking of all sorts of mad stuff. I know they did the draw in Thailand. Yeah. And that was quite. Fun. That was fun. The best was last season when they did the first round draw and someone got drawn out twice. Yeah. I think Charlton got Wickham away and Plymouth at home or yeah. something like that. That was good. But like, yeah, they've, they've, they've got a Honestly, like, they've got a blank camera. They should just do all the stuff that we learn about the FA Cup about, like, yeah. like, like that, like yeah. semis at Villa Park. Well, what they have done is they've also said no more extra time, and you just play now, which uh, actually is really good. Penalties yeah, straight good. on ninety. Because I think it might lead teams to play a stronger side if they know that the half hour is yeah. literally no chance. They yeah. might extra play strong. Just, just so often, just a dead, a, a yeah. dead half hour anyway, isn't it? So yeah. just I want to get then on them with having sort of dealt with Chelsea there. Let's talk about the big six, and we start with Tottenham away, Adam. And it will set a tone, I think. 12.30, you said before, after an international break against the top top four rival. We've heard that song before. Yeah. Uh, but it will set a tone, I think, for the games that follow. It's important. I think, th- I want to phrase this the right way, I think it's important Liverpool play well. I think that the result is obviously crucial, and we, we what Phil said before about eight points is a big deal. But I think it's important Liverpool just play well. Set a tone of, we're, we're in these games now to come. Uh, we're, we're, we're bouncing back into this. Yeah, I... I know the the just just as a, as I sort of mentioned before, you know my thing about the, uh, the 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 fixture list. Alex Ferguson's fixture computer teased them up, and Sky Sports <laughs> knocks them in by changing <laughs> changing them to the earlier way. Um, I think that I, when I was thinking about the, the, this game before, and, and and so Leicester was was also the same situation. I was grumbling about Leicester at being twelve thirty away, and and I think. It might be something that the club now knows that they're going to get a lot of. Um, Klopp sort of spent a, a couple of, 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 of um, well, he spent a few press conferences moaning about them last season. I think this season he's thinking, well, we can't just complain about these. We've got to try and win them now. Um, you know, they are breakfast kickoffs, and nobody likes them. But there's a plan for them now, I think. And I think that how well we started at Leicester will give us loads of heart. Um, I think that we'll be doing really similar things. And actually. When when I when I think about Tottenham away last season, I remember before they score, before Deli Ali scores to make it three one. I was thinking even then, you know, after Salah scores, we're right, we're, we're right in this. We we hadn't started that badly. We just made some ma- massive mistakes, and the, I, I I had confidence up to that three one goal that we could still do something and. I think that that's probably been a bit forgotten because it ends four one, and you know there's there's a lot of a lot of negative press after that. Fair, you know, which which is fair enough. You know, we didn't we, we that was a, a huge kind of aberration really in terms of our season and deserved to be to be criticised. But I think that maybe along with that criticism, Tottenham got carried away and thinking that they were amazing, and I didn't really think that they were. And I think that this season they're not as good as they were last season. Well, just to come back to you on that, Adam. What one of the things that strikes me about these games, for instance, you go to, you go away to Chelsea, and it's going to be different. It's going to be literally they're going to play a completely different shape. There's going to be significant shifts in personnel. We sort of know exactly what we're getting in this Tottenham game. You do feel as though, and, and you get the impression Tottenham probably feel that about us as well. That it's two sides who sort of know what they're going to get. There's no, there's no big surprises coming. Yeah, I know, and. The, the, on, on the other side of sort of the positive noises I was making, I do I do think that every time Tottenham we play Tottenham, they do impress me. Uh, it, it, probably more so at Anfield yeah. actually. Um, I thought that they were better at Anfield than than maybe even they were at, at Wembley. I thought as soon as they equalised at Anfield, I thought they're going to win this. Um, and you know it takes a penalty save to to mean that they don't. Um, uh, so I, I think that the they they do seem to be really well matched sides and it will be a brilliant litmus test I guess to see how to see how much we've improved I don't think that they've particularly improved I think that, that they are really solid though and they'll get a similar number of points as they did last season in all likelihood you know apart from injuries and things like that um, but I, I, I think that, that, that it's time for us to step up and I think that, that uh, I, I'm, you know the international break is in the way of that a bit but in terms of if you just ignore that, I think that we've won our four games without really 
getting out of whatever gear you think it is that we're in. And this game is really where we need to show that we have actually kicked on. Um, and I think that it's a really big ask, but I, I'm 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 really I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how we start. I think that that that. Uh, when I say that, that it's not just me thinking that. I'm kind of trying to second guess what the management team are thinking, and I think they've they've thought, let's get through this. It's almost like the end of pre season. After this, the whole group's together, and then we start. Um, looking at Tottenham, Phil, they've started. They weren't great at Newcastle, but they got the result. Um, they weren't great at Fulham, uh, at home to Fulham, but they got the result. United even first half, United were the better side and then they've lost to Watford. They looked to me a bit shattered post World Cup. They had a lot of players who went really deep. Yeah, they look to me they look the first half against United, I thought there was an element of it being United playing really well. But there was also an element of Spurs looked absolutely done in. Like I I don't think what they've done with their players is gonna end very well in when you get to sort of February, March or something like that. But basically if you write their strongest team down, I think nine of them were still at the World Cup on the last weekend at the World Cup. I think the only ones that weren't were what Ben Davis and Wanyama. I think everybody else was still and and sorry, own, Ericsson as well and, and Wanyama's got his own in, in, and, and Son who's now just done, a, Son, done the yeah. Asian Games isn't he? But the number of them who basically haven't had a summer and have basically gone straight back into football and look tired now how are they going to recover to look better? in February or March or whatever. I just can't see how... Because they don't rotate a lot anyway, no, they don't. Do they? No, they, well, they haven't got many players. If you actually... Look, they've got a fantastic start in 11, like, up there with us and City. Eight and it's really good. Bucks. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really weird. And then you sort of go back and then you look at the bench, like, they bought Harry Winks and Lorente on at Watford trying to equalise the other week. There's well, something not that energetic about the way they play, though, that means I think they can do that. I do think they can get through... Yeah, that's probably true. I do think yeah, they yeah. can get through big batches of games by... You know they they control they they're the opposite of us I think they they, they control things really well and they, they they don't seem to as I say they don't don't seem to be really really you know huff and puff and energetic and um and and you know they, and and they've got Kane who's always in space and always seems to be able to finish you know. is, there's a there's a strange piece I saw the other day that said since February he's had like two point six shots per game weird, and before that he was having six which. Mm. It, Makes you wonder if something. Are you like, saying he's finished, Phil? Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> that one season, one, he's a one season wonder, mate. One season, wonder. one and a bit season. Yeah, remember that when it was people would say he's definitely just one season, and then that would have been three good. seasons later, it would have been good. But yeah, never mind. But I think the, the Tottenham one. I think I'm, I'm 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 optimistic going into it. I think it's been it's. I mean, I haven't keeping I haven't kept loads of eye on the internationals, but I've noticed that the Salah gets a couple, doesn't he? And just the fact that he's back with he the, missed two the, penalties as well. Did, yeah, but that but I don't mind that either because I don't want him anyway. No, I don't, I don't. So I so I mean that's penalties. almost perfect for yeah. me. Score two goals, missed two penalties, um, created two as well. But just the fact that he's back around the squad and seemingly, you know, I'm I'm sure not everything's going away, but the fact that you know he he's there and and, and playing and, and scoring and, and and putting that to, to bed a little bit. I think's good. Uh, Firmino scores as well, obviously, and it's 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 you know it's a bit of a tap in, but it's another goal after the one of the weekend. So I think we're going in with good spirits, but I just don't want the like you know to if we if we if we do get beat there, I, I, we need to try and stay positive and, and everyone's kind of heads can't fall off in a way. Really, yeah, ultimately, there's nothing wrong with losing away at Spurs. Yeah, regardless of what we say now about whether they look tired or they don't look the same team or how good we think they are. There's, if you write our games down in a list of difficulty from 1 to 38 over the course of a season, Spurs away is probably, what, 2, 3, mm. something yeah, like that? Yeah, So if, if you lose any of the first five, it's not ideal. My only, ha- issue, my, my only issue, Phil, is I think like, City are great against them. I think there's some, you know, the way we we've oh, said yeah, before yeah. about there's, some sides match up yeah. against one another. I think City are absolutely brilliant to play in Tottenham. They destroyed them twice last season. Mm. I, I actually think that City confirmed the league and the dominance at home uh, on the 16th of December when they just yeah. take Tottenham to the absolute cleaners 4-1. And there's a there's a period of time where Tottenham are trying to make it interesting, I think, at 2-1. And Kev De Bruyne just decides he's the best player in the country, if not the world, mm. for an afternoon and Tottenham can't get near him. And my thing about this is when you're sort of trying to, you know... We still don't know really exactly what City are going to do on the whole, but I I would expect them to take six points off Tottenham. My worry is that I think Tottenham can take four points off us, and that, that's quite the swing when we think that City can break 90 have points. Have you seen when they're playing Spurs away, though? Go on. They're playing, it's on Monday night. It's like 24 hours after an NFL match. Oh, yeah, yeah, the pitch so going The pitch is going to be hilarious. It's... Th- it's astonishing they've actually decided to have a football match that day, because there's no way. If it rains that weekend... 
the match might not even go ahead. Certain teams are good at playing certain teams, so I always think that, that United are good at playing Tottenham as well. But yeah. that, that, that's obviously that's been t- put on its head, and we're good at playing City. Yeah, no, I think we are good at playing City. I think that's a thing. I think the the Son returning is the the one fill where last season it was rem- a lot of what went on was what Liverpool did badly. A lot a lot of what was discussed was 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 Kane uh, on Lovren. For me, I thought the difference between the two sides on the on the day was Son. I thought he was terrific, and I think he actually was excellent last season. I think he went under the radar a little bit with Tottenham. He's, he's absolutely fantastic. He's got everything. He's two footed. He's quick. He's skillful. He's tricky. He's hard working. He's almost like the perfect fourth man for us to have up front. Like I would quite like it if we walked up to Spurs when here's lots of money. Can we have him? And then you can basically play him more than. It would be like almost a weird situation where he plays more than any of Manny, Firmino and Salah, but he's not first choice, if that makes sense. Mm. He would come in for one of them and be brilliant and we wouldn't drop off. And that would be ideal for me, he's that good. But Yeah, but we're coming up against good players. Yeah. We know there's good they're, players they're everywhere. A good team. They're a good team. And there's good players everywhere. Um, the other thing that struck me about when they played United, John, was they were happy to ease into the game, Tottenham. It, I thought, you know, I always got the impression that they took the nil-nil, that they were happy for it to be nil-nil until 80, as though they were sort of thinking, we'll just hang on in here because the record they've had against United in the past, the way they've struggled at Old Trafford. I sort of wondered again whether or not, I always remember the 1-1 uh, in, when, when Manny uh, first arrived and, and afterwards Danny Rose said it was the hardest game he'd ever played. And I sort of got the impression both managers would have shook hands on 75, Liverpool versus Tottenham. It could be that sort of game again, I think, this one, where we're, we're just, both sides are sort of, I've got so much respect for one another that it, it, it may well be not quite as intense as we think it is if there isn't an early goal I'd forgotten about that game we were really good that game when we first started we were unlucky and I think if the game would have come like later in the season where we would have had a bit more confidence we, we might have sort of run away with that I think well, what's good about this Liverpool team and looking at past Tottenham ones is that they can't they can't sort of hang in there and be solid and wait for us to make a mistake anymore because we're, we're, we're sort of too good defensively and I think that's that's important. I think when Tottenham, you know, that four one, as as one of the lads said before, they didn't actually play that well. They just they were just great to capitalise on our mistakes and great at poaching and they were solid and you know, but you wouldn't say they, they battered us in a kind of way that four ones kind of often are. We were, you know, the we are our own worst enemies, especially uh, Dejan, obviously, who has a bit of a nightmare. And so, and so we were at Anfield in a way. How many, you know, we gave them two pens, didn't we? That for, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Was, so, so, so you can't see. What I'm trying to say is, I think Tottenham will approach it thinking we're going to have to do something good to beat this Liverpool team. And, and and that maybe helps us on the break or maybe helps us in terms of being a bit more of an open game. I don't know. But the idea of, and I think it doesn't just go for Tottenham, it goes for anyone playing us. The idea of, you know, to come to Anfield or play Liverpool, just hang in the game and then someone will do something stupid. Hopefully, one, yeah. hopefully he's gone. Now, that's not to say that we won't make a mistake all season because we obviously will and it might be in this game. But, you know, you can't bank on it like you used to be able to. And I think that's important because I think teams will have to come out of small. Um, what then we then do is have we've got Paddy San German at home on the Who's Tuesday. The it's the not rest? been confirmed, Jess. Right. Um, Tuesday is it usually? Mavis Wilton. <laughs> um, we've got Paddy's one for Rita the teenagers Sullivan. there. Sullivan. Yeah, Risa Sullivan. Uh, we've got Paddy San German the following Tuesday, and there, Adam, you can already see the pace of these games. I mean, that's I think this is the biggest group game, and I'm certainly the first, the biggest first half of the season game at Anfield since Madrid in 2014. It's one that everyone will want to play in, you know. So you can the manager can talk about rotation, but you know you just can't imagine a world where he's able to sit Sadio Mane down and say, "Yeah, I'm resting you for this one, mate." And you could, you know, uh, it, for me, that's you know that's re- that, that's nonsense. It's very very difficult for him. It's it's huge, and it'll be something that everyone. It'll be a great night, but winning it will be massive. Yeah, I mean, they are an absolute unknown quantity. This is the one way, I suppose, which um, t- Tottenham being the early early Saturday helps, I suppose, doesn't it? Uh, is, is that they, they have we have got enough uh, enough time to, to to be able to 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 play two pretty much strongest uh, elevens, um, and it is it's it's huge because I think I, I think everyone's everyone's waiting to see you know what they bring. Uh, everyone knows about their front three and our front three, you know. Me and Phil have had a few uh, good conversations about sort of the. I think it's really interesting comparing the two front threes, um, and it is just. It, 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 there's, I can't see any negatives. It's just fantastic. What what a fantastic thing! You know, this is this this really is what you're in it for, isn't it's, it? It's nice to be involved in the big game yeah. Yeah. on a Champions League night because yeah. you, you've looked back the last few years and it's been. There's always quite often one game you look at and think that's a really good game and 
we are that game this time. Yeah. And that's just nice, isn't it? Really? Yeah, no, it's boss. It's a team we've not played, you know, in terms of, you know, for, for us, go, go, got to go in the game. You know, you you can sometimes feel with Champions League that they fill, they fill up a lot of the same. Yeah, yeah. They fill up a lot of the same fixtures. Massive. Well, this is this is a new one. It's it's lads we've not seen before as well yeah. in terms of it'd be the first time I've seen Mbappé in the flesh and I yeah. think it'll be the case yeah. for, for most people, really. I'm just going to watch Cavani because I still don't know how good he is. <laughs> He's astonishingly good. Oh, brilliant. I think he's brilliant. Not, well, well, we'll all wait and see. I'm in, still in not my sure. Head, he's either. like an idealised Andy Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> he's a perfect Andy Carroll. Yeah. Um, but he looks like in pink shorts. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> and Betty does. I don't think Neymar's come to Anfield yet. No, has he hasn't. He? No, yeah, he hasn't. yeah, so we, we oh, kind of missed he, he, him. He scored Anfield for Brazil, didn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is, is that what he's basing the atmosphere on? Will he rubbish? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Doesn't realise he's lacing Brazilians. <laughs> So there's, so yeah, so he's, I mean, Neymar's had a go and he tried to sell pay-per-views or whatever the boxes do, <laughs> uh, which, which I'm sort of into, uh, you know, he's doing his, you know. Well, so, cause sometimes the group games, the atmosphere doesn't quite get up as much as you think. Like Seville wasn't, a, it was, it was a bit quiet last year, but I think Neymar sorted that. He's boxed it. <laughs> yeah, fair play. I'd quite well, like honestly, it, selling pay-per-views. I'd quite like if it wasn't at its maximum. Because yeah. it almost feels like in the knockout stages, the atmosphere really is a, a weapon for us and, if PSG turn up in a semi-final and go, ah, oh, we've already had this brilliant atmosphere, we know what it's like. Yeah, then it's like Chelsea, it's isn't working it? against so, Yeah, exactly. Chelsea exactly. In, in 2005. A huge part of the atmosphere is the shock level. <laughs> yeah. A huge part of the atmosphere is the shock level. So fourth gear, would you say? Yeah, yeah that'll, be, that'll do. That'll fourth. Do. I will, I will do the best you can there, Phil. Uh, <laughs> I'll just stand there telling everyone to shut up. <laughs> no, 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 Keep the noise down. Phil with his iPad. Up a bit more. No, no, no. Down again, down again. Hang on. Whoa. No, go, go. go. All right, that's enough. Um, I think it'll the other one, itself. The other one to point out. <laughs> The other one to point out, John, is is the, is the Paris Saint Germain do are looked after by the French league. Uh, they have Sa- uh, Saint Etienne at home, seven forty five on the Friday. Oh yeah, um, excellent. So just get 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 a bit of extra time to get their heads down. If only that was possible. Um, the the thing about it is you you're, you're talking about enjoying it, John, and I think it's a really interesting one. This because if the manager was here, he'd be saying, "Lads, enjoy it." He really would be saying, "You know, enjoy this. This is the purpose of it all." But simultaneously, there is something in the back of all of our minds, and it is fair to say we got to the final of this thing last year. We looked pretty good in doing so, yeah. and there is a thing, isn't there, where we can say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." You know, it's a, it's it's a, it's about sort of it is the reward. It's about taking every opportunity to have a fantastic time. But there is something that I'm thinking here, which is. Go and beat them. Let's beat these. Let's and let's beat them well. Let's sort of say, right, we're winning this group. Let's win, let's say we're winning this group week one. Well, I was going to say in terms of the group, beating PSG first game puts you in a really, yeah, really yeah. strong position. You know, you, you you're almost kind of, you know, I think if you if you're Napoli, then you're looking at that, you're thinking, oh, you know, maybe could do with a draw here or or PSG is the top side. You know, maybe going there and doing a bit of then. You know that that really takes the stuff in out of, out of Napoli, especially if you know if, if if they don't win their game, if that's a draw or whatever, and so it puts you in a really good position. I think even if we lose, it's not the end of the world. What yep. you don't want to do is get battered, and I think and you know I'm not saying I'm, I'm particularly worried about that, but you know anyone can get battered in a game against a good team, I suppose, and I think. That would take the wind out of ourselves a little bit from a European point of view. Because as you say, we're, we're strutting around like European royalty again now, aren't we? We're saying, you know, we're, we've got the final on merits. You know, we're looking at, you know, looking at hotels in Madrid and stuff like that. Already and, sorted. <laughs> of course you are, Phil. What a prepared man. And so, and so, you know, you, you, you're thinking about it in that way, aren't you? And and so if, if they get beat three or four or something, then you don't want the players to start, start doubting themselves because, you know, these... Runs and they did well. These ones that run to the final happen because of you know belief in in, in all circles. So, you know, it's, it's a tight game. No, I'm not. I'm not too bothered. But as you say, if, if they can win, then I think that puts us in a really good position in terms. Of I the think. The, I think the Napoli game is actually more important because if we go to Napoli, get the three points, we are almost certainly, I think, through because the, the two games after that, we play in Belgrade and then at Anfield or the other way around rather. You should get six points from that. So if you can go after three after three games, you have got the nine points. And PSG have hopefully beaten Napoli twice. They've got three points. I think it's so. Ideally, I'm not really bothered whether we come first or second. I just want to be. 
one would ideally be through after four games. And Having you can the time in those the two games, the last two so games. So is the fourth game the second game against uh, Red Star? We played yeah. back to back against. So Red Star, I think yeah. I, I wanted that back to back. I was really pleased when I saw that the back to back was in the middle, um, and I, th- I think you know a really good point by John that, that getting PSG out of the way first. If we win it, then 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 um, it, it, we we are, we do look in really good shape. I think it I think it's good also for us as fans because I think everyone's sort of in their heads focusing on the league, which is a daft thing that we do. Like it like it matters what we're focusing on, but I think that that this will remind everybody, uh, you know, should it all be in well. Oh God, we're really good in the Champions mm-hmm. League, and I think that that's that's what we had um, by having the qualifier last year. Mm-hmm. We we played Hoffenheim and realised. We're gonna we're gonna give a few people a scare, you know. I, I remember watching the Hoffenheim qualifier and thinking, um, I, I can see us doing this in the semis. I, I could I could you vi- can visualise the semis already in the qualifier at home. So I think that that we're gonna get another reminder of how good we are in the in, in this competition, and you know, r- remind ourselves that we don't just have to put all our eggs in the league basket because we've got a brilliant chance of going all the way in this one again. Uh, breaking news uh, is that the Chelsea uh, game uh, has been confirmed as being at on the Wednesday. Uh, the Wednesday. Do we I'm, know? Does this mean Everton on the Tuesday? Because I, I really, really want this to be the case because they'll get really angry at us. I'm trying to nothing Phil, to do with us. It Phil, must have to, I think. Phil, what I'm doing is I'm trying to look at Everton Twitter right Excellent. now. <laughs> fantastic, so don't fantastic. Fantastic. worry about that, mate. Think of the do, reaction. Think well, of the reaction. If just on this. Just on this, so we can just get Everton Glorious. Twitter together and have a little look through. Uh, this run of games does remind me of 2001, which is obviously convenient because we've got our thing looking at the FA Cup final in 2001. John's fantastic moments in time. I've heard it. It is the absolute business. Practically everybody who was involved at the time has contributed to it. Then, put loads and loads of work in. Sorry, Everton are playing the week after on the Tuesday. Oh, that's not as exciting, unfortunately. Uh, that is not as exciting. On the plus side, so. does mean they've got to go to a League Cup game while everyone else plays Champions League. That's yeah, quite that's funny. Not, not quite as exciting. Uh, but yes, everyone was involved in this moment of time that John's done. Uh, he spoke to Michael Owen himself, uh, Phil Thompson, Jamie Carragher, Emil Heskey, Stefan Honcho, Sander Vesterveld, uh, amongst others. Lee Dixon's contribution is fantastic. Amy Lawrence came in as well from an Arsenal point of view, and an array of Liverpool supporters. He's pulled it all together. A look at that day in 2001 when Michael Owen won the cup effectively all by himself. And here's a little sneak preview of it. Cardiff was a good stadium for it because it was so big. The moments in the match are great and the goals going in are unbridled. But that feeling of elation, that's what you're in it for. And the moments you remember when you look back on it. To see the, the faces on the people behind that goal was just astonishing. It was disbelief. I, I always remember getting back into the room and just, just sort of crashing on my bed, really, and just sort of just lying there thinking you've won the FA Cup. If I could rewind the clock and, and have one day again in my life, then I would say it would be that. It was probably my most favourite as a, as a professional footballer. And when you look back, it's not those of other things that's associated with, with being a footballer. It's those days when you win a trophy and you, you know, you're together with, with all your teammates and you have a party afterwards. They're the, they're the ones that you, you remember. Moments in time then. Well in, John. It's boss. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed putting them all together, but this one was especially nice because um, I remembered it, basically. So the other the other two, um, I was quite young for, very young in the case of the first one, literally months old. So, the, you know, the stories that were fun to find out about and, and find out more, and I felt like I was learning as I'm doing them, whereas this one was... Our team, our time, as Gareth Roberts says in it. Um, so nineteen going to the final uh, with my mates and just a brilliant day. And I think it's been it's you know we've only put the trailer out so far. Then obviously this, but it's funny how many people it's chime with us being. I think it's something that Jamie Carragher actually talks about in the in the show itself. Uh, well, in the in the documentary itself, when he says for a lot of people that was their best day in football up to that point. You know, you think you know before that it was. What the League Cup in ninety five and then the FA Cup in ninety two. I was only ten for that, so you know it was it was it was a nice day. I enjoyed watching it, but you know for that couldn't have a pint. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'd lived through a time of of frustration. I think to say on under we having some some good teams and good nights, but but not a huge amount to show for it. Just that one League Cup, and so so that for, for a lot of us, and I think the home man, but all sorts of similar age, uh, apart from Phil, who just looks it. Um, <laughs> Get <laughs> in. Um, How long did you? That one, <laughs> you seen you seen I was on this show. <laughs> Get in there. No, but, but but seriously, no, I think for a lot of us, it was like you know, it was it was 
it was it was a it brilliant was, day. I, I remember thinking this is the best day of my life. Yeah, and like you know, it was just you know, it's a beautiful day as well. You know, there's perfect, a lot on the There's a lot on how hot it is, Adam. Yeah, oh, I had to take half of it out because like Josh, who does it with me. Was like you've done a lot on the heat, and I was like, yeah, I know, Josh, but it was, you know, you, were, <laughs> you weren't there, man. <laughs> you know, there's loads of the thing is to be fair, there's loads of footy players going. It's the hottest game I've ever played in. Uh, yeah, it was just Tony Everton played. Well, oh, well, well, Lee Dixon, funny enough, he, he tells a story, not to give too much away, but, but says like he says to Tony Adams, if if you if you win the toss, just turn it around because I can't play 45 minutes in that because the, 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 it was the, the half of the pitch it was like lengthways and so and, and, and Tony Adams like lo- lost the toss and just looked at him and shook his head and he <laughs> him, you know, said his head was splitting at half time with like a headache because yeah. it was that like and he's you know he's not as pasty as old Tony is he so I don't think Tony no one is I don't think Tony would have made it bless him but, um, but it was <laughs> hot but it was brilliant and uh, everyone who got involved was, was was great, and it was it was another thing about sorry to bang on about my own thing a little bit, but, but like obviously the earlier ones, um, you know you're relying on memories from '82 and things like that, and and, and memory go over time it happens to, to all of us really. But for this one, like it was you know I could have done two hours really because everyone's memory the days really cleared and loved it, and and it was a case of, of having to keep in. So I might I might do an outtake to one who knows, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it was really good. We're really all really pleased yep. with it, and um, yeah, enjoy and share because you know we want we want lots of people maybe who don't normally listen to podcasts or whatever to listen to it because obviously they, they take a lot longer to put together than than the normal shows. So if you do enjoy it and you know other reds, you maybe don't normally listen to the rap or listen to podcast or whatever, or just general football fans because. You know, you were saying near like an Arsenal. Fan Arsenal, I could listen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so do share it. Do do kind of try and support us because that's the way. Like, I can just I keep doing them. Okay. Um, <laughs> to quite, myself as much as anything. Quite, quite an honest plea there from John. <laughs> um, Adam, one little thing before we, we we knock PSG on the head. Um, Sunday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Sorry, who who would you worry? Who would you maybe think he might not have played both games? He said he will rotate. I don't see any way he doesn't start the same front three across the two of them unless one of them comes back. A little bit interesting. Who would you maybe see that he rotates? Maybe in, the, in the, looking at the back seven. Yeah, I'm not concerned about about the front three. I think I think if anything, um, you know, players like Firmino like playing the the, the, the two games in a week. Uh, they get into the, a bit more of a rhythm, and I think he is starting to come into a bit more of a rhythm. Milner looked a bit tired, didn't he? Um, I thought like, against um, against Leicester. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not I'm not rotating the back four. Um, I'm not rotating. So the you'd have, you'd you'd have Trent in both. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't really I don't really see why not. Um, so yeah, I, I mean I'm only I'm only really thinking that the the mid the midfield three and and I, it's one of them where. I think they're all good options, and I wouldn't be massively surprised by any 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 particular rotations in there. But you know, they, they, it's, it's early in the season. I think it's only only Milner's looked a bit leggy so far. I'd be surprised if he played Milner against Spurs on PSG. I, just, yeah. I think yeah. given most of his game, and this sounds a bit unfair, is is about graft and working hard and stuff like that. To ask him to cover what twenty five kilometers mm. on Saturday and Tuesday, it just seems like far too much. I think. I hate the Wembley factor, by the way, Phil. Yeah. I know you're telling. I know. I've, I know I've you're telling me it's an not, illusion. I know you're telling the me it's not. Same size as Bournemouth. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it can't be true. I, I think true. I don't think it is true. Just, yeah. I think it's one of those football things <laughs> where you, know, you can prove anything with facts. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, but Wembley is more yeah. tiring than Bournemouth. <laughs> it's like Heaton's fact with Edinburgh being further it's west. Mind blowing that, I'm isn't it? I'm not having it. I'm just. I just <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I'm just. I'm, I'm like Adam with Wembley. No. <laughs> Here's a map, John. No, not having it. No, 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 not having it. It's an interesting one then which one you pick Milner for because I'd maybe quite like him at PSG. I think it'll be Spurs though because he's not had the international game. Well, you had the, you had the, uh, the game with Petro. <laughs> I mean, that looked quite intense at parts, do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I, think it's prob- I think you're probably looking at Henderson, Milner and Cater at Spurs and then maybe Ronaldo in for Milner for PSG. Maybe he's saving Fabinho for the Champions League. It's, possible. Fabinho, it's definitely possible. Fabinho has played French teams. That's true. Yeah, it speaks the He's language. He's won a league. Game game like tactics. <laughs> <laughs> you he can be- both that notes. <laughs> I was going to say that as well. That's one of the best things I've seen uh, in yeah. years. It's brilliant. 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 But Walshie's shout was absolutely right that he should have had it. What <laughs> <laughs> more Walshie is it if he'd had it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think he should have been more of an arsehole. <laughs> 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 
But yeah, but maybe, I mean, for me, you know, straight in for, for PSG, it'd be, yeah. it'd be an interesting one. He could even, it? I mean, he played fullback, didn't he? So if you're saying about rotating Trent, he Apparently played, did all right. he played, I mm. think he played really well for Brazil, so you never know. He, he might, because that was the thing I, I was thinking. Why have we got you know? Because because Fabinho wasn't the sort of player we were linked with at all, ever really. Under no, it just came from, uh, and, he, and he came from nowhere. And it might be that it was that sort of game, you know, a big game in the Champions League, where you think maybe we we are a little bit less controlled than than we need to be sometimes. You never know. Uh, then let's move along. Then the breather week, Southampton home, uh, John. It'll be one of those home games where if we don't score early, it won't be a battle of laughs, I don't think, in that we know the importance of it, what Phil said before. We know this is, in theory, the breather week, but in reality what it means is that it's a must-win game for Liverpool. It would be cheap points to give away. Yeah, it is the must-win, isn't it? And that's almost harsh, but that, that's the way it is. And, and look, we're looking at trying to get 90-plus points this season, and so that's the situation we're in. You can't throw many away. You know, it's 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 almost... One, two, three games maybe where you know we should be winning the the uh, you know home games that, that we that we have to and and that's just the situation we're in. It's high stakes. It's it's you know it's it's a you know tight rope. We're, we're all all the uh, all the cliches are, are kind of true with it and and it's one where you know we as you say we need to get three points. But I think on the on the if we don't score the early thing, I think people are a little bit more relaxed now because of the bench and I think that makes makes people think. I think the whole. You just bring Mane on, wouldn't you? Yeah, the whole tension of the crowd thing, I think, comes from the fact that it means a lot to us, and the fact that you know that would maybe that sort of crowd anyway. But also the fact that you know we've we've spent quite a while now looking at benches and and it, and, it, and not really thought about you know it's it's these lads who got to sort it or nothing. Where that's not really the case now, and so I think I think we can be a little bit more patient and a little bit more. And as as Phil just alluded to there, you would imagine he won't go full strength in that game or what we consider full strength and so there'll be a there'll be a cavalry option as well the mad rivalry seems to have died down a bit as well they probably I mean I don't know whether we'll play Lovren they've got Ings now so maybe they're alright with us now can't not play their, against us though not, I know it's not, but it's not their Still cup will. final anymore They've got bigger. Well, Send small, them a bowl. Smaller, smaller, smaller fish to fry. They've got smaller fish to fry, <laughs> they've got fish to fry now. Ball, they've got Bournemouth now. They've got a proper rivalry yeah. now. Well, they, they ate that. But yeah, they've, exactly. That's they've got smaller fish to fry. though, like staying up, staying up. Because uh, the the <laughs> yeah, they hate themselves too much. They <laughs> yeah. else. They anyway, do. They now hate themselves too much. And they haven't got it. Let's grind them into a fine powder anyway. Well, that, that'd be lovely, Adam. <laughs> uh, let's fine powder them. I uh, think um, Shakiri starts there. You'd be amazed if Shakiri doesn't start that game. And then start the League Cup midweek. Yeah. I agree with that. I think, one. I, know, I think there'll be three or four of them. I think we might yeah. get two games back to back. I think, him, might I think him and Sturridge could. I think him and Sturridge could, and then you play sort of one well, of Mane and Salah, and then one of Mane and Salah. But the reason why Phil is because I would say what follows this, and this is why it is the breather week, and why you know it wouldn't surprise me if he makes if he makes quite oh. significant changes for Southampton, and then sticks with those significant changes for Chelsea. Yeah. That it might not actually be ten changes between Southampton and Chelsea in the League Cup, is because basically. I've been racking my brains on it. The week that follows, Chelsea away half five Saturday, Napoli away, City at home, eight days. I think that's the biggest test of a Liverpool squad since 2009. I've gone right there. I think from when we played Madrid and Man United back to back. I think it's the biggest test of a Liverpool squad I can think of, for or even got the Chelsea, uh, the Chelsea quarter final that year, that I can think of. I've, I've, I've racked my brains and racked my brains. I was through LFC history this morning because even for instance the run of thirteen fourteen, it's a game a week. Yeah, there's no European. Football. There's no European football, and it's a game a week. This is I and, and nor at any point do two massive games come back to back in exactly the same way as this. You know, two massive league games in terms of Chelsea and City. I, it is a huge, huge week that. You know, very few things are actually ever properly season defining. Ever so slightly, this might be. Yeah, it's one of those where if you, you lose both of them, and it's a huge, it's a psychological. It's not just a psychological blow. It's also the fact that that's six point. That's no points from two games. Which so we, let's say we draw with Spurs, beat Southampton. That's what sixteen points after six, which is really good start. If you then sixteen points after eight, and City have then. Got an edge on you. You sort of start start panicking a little bit. City, City are three or four exactly. points clear of you, and you've still got to go to the exactly. gaff. Which is a bit weird because if we'd have been three or four points behind City from what we knew at the start of the season, I'd probably have been broadly speaking okay with it. But now that we won the first four and they didn't, you you sort of thinking right, we need to really be up with them here because if you're not, it feels like you've done something wrong, which is a bit of a weird. We certainly thing need to be. We need to be keeping pace. The good thing about this, it's like it's like the the good thing about uh, a, a tough start is that once you through it, yes, you you really get to see where you know see where you are. So 
we will we, we've given ourselves a good chance to be in contention I mean in terms of in contention when City come to Anfield um, that, that uh, it's, it's unlikely that they'll be you know streets ahead you know it's, it's almost it's pretty much impossible so that 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 makes it because I think that this is this is like a really tough run of games in a, in a in a time of the season where we have traditionally struggled. So it is a, a, you know it's a, ma- a massive test. Um, but the, as I say, the good thing about that is is that once you're through it, then you really get to, to to look around you and think, okay, this is this is where we are and this is what we can drive at. The eight after that are quite nice actually as well, aren't they? Have you got them there? I can get them. Yeah, no, but it's, it's, I mean, I think I know broadly speaking what they are. We play Huddersfield, Cardiff, Arsenal, Fulham, Wat- Watford. Uh, then Everton, and yeah. then I think it's Burnley and Bournemouth away, is it? Yeah. Which is as a run over the course of what was that about two months? Yeah. That's you're looking at that thinking that that's eight games that should be twenty points really. Watford are amazing though. We've seen them. They got to, they'll, they'll get they'll be safe by yeah. November and turn it in. Though, so <laughs> we just need to not. They'll get to forty right points now. and give up. So if they can get to forty points before we play them, that's mathematically impossible. But it'd be still nice. No, you never know. You never know. Um, just on that though, the, the city <laughs> thing is the thing I don't want to do is go into three go into city three points behind them. John needing a win. Where and if they win, they get to make it six. Because firstly, at some point they are going to win. They are, you know, at some point they are going to get a win at Anfield. I've been saying that about Everton, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a profound difference. Uh, I, I will keep saying it about Everton. And on Hello, that city's fixtures, blue. Yeah, not sure. City's fixtures, <laughs> miseries. <laughs> Full of home. Leon, Leon at home, uh, Cardiff away, Oxford United away, Brighton at home, Hoffenheim away, and then us. I mean, you know, the, it's chalk and cheese, the comparison, but we'll have more good nights out. Yeah, it's one of them, is it? <laughs> yeah, accentuating the positives, Neil. Quite correct. Um, I mean... I was... Apart from Oxford away. We're a serious culture shock now, aren't we, in terms of what they've had before? Yeah, see, more positives from Phil. Um, agree with all of this. Uh, <laughs> and Adam makes an excellent Everton point. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, look, look, it's... I think that the Anfield's in their head as well. Like. Yeah, no, it is. And you can look, you can go mad on fixtures, can't you? As, as Phil said before, you know, you you looked at their first four and went to oh, twelve points. Well, they've not done it. Do you know what I mean? And so, you, so, you, so you don't know. I've got a, just got a little feeling that something's maybe not quite right at City at the moment. I'm not saying they're going to implode or anything like that. I'm not saying it's a Man United situation, but I don't know. The the Sarney thing's a bit mad, isn't it? And mm. and I think you know, there's De Bruyne missing. Yeah, De Bruyne missing. You know, and and. I, think I wonder you, how much he fancies Mares. Yeah, no, like he's had a look at Mares you know, now, they, and he might they just be not Jorginho, sure. They didn't get him, and I think like I've watched bits of the documentary. I've not watched loads of it, mainly the bit where they all cried about the bus. To be honest, <laughs> but like he's so intense, Pep, isn't he? That like you start to see why like he's he's moved on a bit more, and you know he's he, he maybe just starts to do you head in a bit. And I think I'm not saying either they're, they're there yet, the players, because. You know, I think I think they are kind of behind him, really. But I think there's there's maybe a little bit of, you know, that you know keeping them motivated through these league games and through these league games where you know this, it's not the, the, what it was last year where the way they're on this run and they keep on going and blah 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 and and doing shark things. And I think like for them now, it's a case of. You know what I mean? I've got to go here again. And, they need and do they that. need a big win, sort of, don't they? Which yeah. is the, 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 they might not get from a run of easy games. Like they, you know, they had their last minute Bournemouth win the last season, yeah. and then they battered us. And that was what it was, wasn't it? That was their whole season. There, you can understand the narrative, and they yeah. sort of haven't well, haven't had that this time. One of the things that strikes me about them, Phil, is it's not as similar to Tottenham in that you get the impression that, with the exception of Mendy. Even though he wasn't, you know, he was he was the previous summer signing. It's a bit like playing the same team. I've said there, you know, they haven't committed to Mares yet. I don't see how Mares starts at Anfield. To be honest with you, thinking about it, it's Mendy's the major difference for them, and you can see that in terms of how they've played. They've almost played with a freshness, with reference to him, and everywhere else. I'm not going to say it's stale. I, I, I don't know if things aren't quite right, but you sort of get the impression he's the one who's who's bringing the difference at the minute, and everyone else is going about the 100 point business, which is great business to go about. But he does sort of seem like he's the nearest thing they've got to something that shook it up yeah I think there's a there's a big thing that if football teams don't sort of make a change they go backwards instead of staying standing still because teams figure you out and they know what you're going to do and you watch the which game who did they play when they won 5-0 Aguero scored Huddersfield Huddersfield that was 6-0 wasn't it 6-1 yeah well we got there in the end Um, (laughs) you had the goal difference right all the way through um, and the he was like a one man left side and it was in the difference he yeah, maybe was incredible to that performance really but there's nothing else to freshen it up and if we were able to shut it down last season 
in what three three of the four games we played. Why are we not going to be able to do it this season? Because there's not they're not doing anything different. There's no different players. I, I well, Mahrez is quite clearly a good player. I don't think I was amazed that someone actually paid that money for him because I don't think he's quite in that bracket. I mean, that might come back and haunt me, and that yeah. might look very stupid. But I don't think he's anywhere near Sane or Sterling or. Um, I, I, for me, he's a, in that level. he's a very Ferguson. I'm going to use him in the winter sign him, that's, where that's, where he's part of you know possibly fair. he's part of what does them in 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 December, January, there's February. Also, there's and also a, Champions League players come back. There's also a lot of players who are really good at being a team's best player, an average team's best player, but they're not as good at being a, yeah. a really good team's average player, and that might be the case with him. Um, but you, you just look at them and. I think I agree with John. They just don't. Something doesn't quite look right because even in that Wolves game, they weren't battering Wolves. They weren't. They had a bit hard lines. They, I thought they were, they were a bit unlucky, but it wasn't like the keeper was making three hundred saves no. and they were camped in the penalty box and it was incessant pressure. They had a few good chances. Like the keeper pulled off a fantastic save. Could have had a couple of they could, have, could they could have. They could have done. Yeah, on another day they yeah. could have won that game four 0 But it would have been a four 0 sort of like um, us against West Ham, where it was. The, the keeper wasn't making save after save after save, and they've won a game, and you've got yeah, the belief wasn't well. quite there though. So, so the, the they were they were winning games two one last season, weren't they? They were mm. winning get, away games and home games last minute at two one, but it always felt like they were going to. And I wasn't. I watched the last twenty minutes of that Wolves game, and I wasn't thinking. They, it wasn't a bombardment. No, that's what that's basically. They, they, yeah. they were. They, they didn't seem to have that same sort of. You didn't feel panicked. That Not really, and, and and in fact, when uh, Traore came, Adama Traore came on, it was it was almost like Wolves could nick this. What a man footballer he is! Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, but he also reminded that for all Mendy's strengths as well, he didn't look very happy turning around. That's what I was going to say. There's a few murmurings about about Mendy not particularly fancying defending um, and I wonder whether that might be a, a part of the story at Anfield um, but I think they might do something mad at Anfield like play two up top or something like that and then just have Mendy as a one man left side but we'll see um, just on the the Napoli away game John again you wonder about changes as you suspect that you're going to see a lot of changes between these three in the midfield and maybe in the full back area that's what you'd expect they'd be the sort of the five players who are vulnerable to, to the being a change Um you do think that we're set up now to go and get results in European football away from home. We, we've got the look of that sort of side. That's even maybe what may well suit us the most. Yeah, definitely. I don't think we'll fear going anywhere because of what we did last season. But also, as you say, the, you, you don't want to go 1-0 down against us at home. And, and it, it's, it, it starts to become really tough because how much do you push forward? How much do you go for that equaliser? Knowing the, the pace we've got on the break, knowing the patience we've got. The team knows it's got goals in them, so it doesn't go chasing them. If that makes sense, you know, you, you we, we know that the goals, the goals will come and and they will create chances, and so, so that's kind of a luxury for the team to have, really, because it doesn't sort of sort of panic you, and you don't think, oh, we need to score in the last, next ten, or we want yeah. it. They haven't got that at all, and so, I think Napoli will be will be looking at that game and and thinking, you know, you know. Need to start well. Need to start well. Need to make sure we're on top and hopefully get the the first goal and then, and then we'll sort of have a decision to make. They, really, they've also got the issue of knowing that their next two games in that group are PSG home and away. Have they got that? Back yeah, to back, they've got they? that back to back. Yeah, so if they don't beat us, they're sort of they're, they're doing quite a lot of panicking. Oh, they've bottled it already, haven't they? Anyway, aren't they Did suing you away for yeah. or something? Yeah. Yeah. There's something else though. There's something else, Phil. Just to hark back to last season when I'm going through the, all these games and doing the context things. One of the things that occurred to me is lots of things that happen through a season. At the time, they can feel hugely damaging and hugely negative. So severe away last season mm. is a really easy game to get on the back of Liverpool about for a variety of different reasons. Now I look at that severe away game and all I see is the positives. Because we've addressed the goalkeeper, we've addressed left back, we've addressed the centre back with with Van Dijk, and I'm looking at it going. All I can see now is that we went to Sevilla away, a ground that's meant to be ridiculously difficult to go to, and we went three 0 up. And now, you know, at the time it was it was like people were renting garments all over the place, tearing their hair out. Right now, I'm going fine, brilliant. In fact, we know we can go to Napoli. We know we can quieten that crowd. We know we can go in half time three 0 I mean, this Sevilla's home record is absolutely. Incredible. They seem to like beat one of Real Madrid or Barcelona every season, and they're not a particularly great side, but they get it done at home. We went there and destroyed them, like absolutely destroyed them first half, like tore them to shreds in an attacking way. And I mean, we th- we were basically through on goal yeah. three times, weren't we? Because we missed a couple of one on ones as well, I think. Yeah. Um, but the the positive from that 
we've still got and we've basically eradicated all the negatives as you say so being able to go away from home to somewhere like Napoli or probably a reasonable level side I think I don't a, a similar side sorry I don't think they're quite as good as they were last season I think they overperformed last year for me the, the other thing another Ferguson thing is remember after 08-09 and Ferguson said Liverpool won't be as good next yeah. year they'll, 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 they'll put all the chips on that and they've, it's not come off I feel the same about Napoli they've lost George Gino and made him tick they've lost the manager they've got a, a very different manager that's what I was going to say they're, 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 half, they're, they're just in, in, at the start of a new project they're, you know, they're not quite the Ancelotti side yet and the same way it's Chelsea I, I feel the same about Chelsea they're not quite they're not quite there yet yeah. with, with Sarri so it's interesting that we're playing the, those teams sort of back quite yeah. close together um, you know I, I, I still think I know we haven't quite talked about the, the Chelsea away game we've kind of moved past that now but I think that they haven't really been tested yet and, and, and teams that they've played Arsenal which is they've not four really, games which you'd have expected them I know, to it's win not, really. and, and I think that they think that they've been tested because they've played Arsenal but it's not really it's not really the test Arsenal that still tore them to shreds at times as well yeah I, I, I just think we'll I think I, I'm a, I'm a that's the only thing I'm a little bit disappointed about that we've got them in the League Cup because there's something about those two games that you think, oh, you know, I don't want to get, I don't want to get us beating them out of the way first because I want to beat them in the league. Oh. I wanted to shock them in the league. Um, I still think we'll do them there, though. Yeah, I do as well. I think we'll. I, I'm more we'll confident. Just, we'll about just that basically one. spend 90 minutes putting balls over Marcus Alonso's head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which um, and again another lad who doesn't like to turn round. Um, turning round is not for him. Um, out on all this, then, with your confidence, Adam, what's reasonable? What's a reason? Phil said at the start, if we get eight, and it's different, it's, it's really interesting to me that eight and nine could actually give have different outcomes in this, and that what eight does is it means that no one's beaten us, and it means that City haven't beaten us. What's a reasonable sort of points haul in the league? What's a reasonable Champions League expectation? What's a reasonable League Cup expectation slash desire? What's, what's us being able to have this conversation in a month and go, yeah, we're all right there? Um, Like I say, I, I think I think we've, I'm 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 thinking that we that we'll that we'll beat Chelsea and I think we'll beat Southampton and the the, the City and Tottenham ones either side I'm 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 not as as kind of sure about but you know so if we say you know if if we can get two wins two draws then I think that's you know that, that that's great isn't it you know I'd I'd uh, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah I'd I'd, I'd I would I'd, I'd be pleased with I'd take I'd absolutely take a draw at Spurs right now. Um, but the thing, the thing about them is, it's it, it, as every game comes, you realise that Liverpool are still in really good shape. And I think me and John said in, before the season started, ages before the season started, we, that we're we're going to be one of those teams that that's looking to win every game this season. You know, that there's there's no reason why we can't just look to win every game. And and when you look at the, the a set of fixtures as a block, you're like, oh, there's a lot of games there, but it's not. They they they, they come out of time. You get a break in the middle, and. There's there's none of those games which I won't be when it starts reasonably expecting us to win. Um, so I think I think we'll be I think we'll be really well well placed in in the in, in the group and I think that we will um, haven't, haven't we won't have lost more than one of those games I don't think. I'd take seven. I think I think seven means that. Um, in my weird way, you've got more from <laughs> from the, those fixtures than you did last season. Um, I think it also means that you've almost certainly definitely beaten Southampton at home, which is which is a good thing. And I think you're looking at those other three games and thinking, well, you've you've beaten one of your rivals, which is good. You've drawn with the other one, which is fine. Uh, you know, it's probably the draw is probably in one of those away games, isn't it? And then then you've lost one, but look, we're going to lose a game eventually this season, unfortunately, and. You know, if it if it is one of these, then it, then it, then I don't think it's the end of the world. I think seven points from those games, bearing in mind we've got twelve from the first four, I think is completely fine. And I think you you know whatever happens in our rival kind of teams fixtures, I think I think you're in a really good position. Imagine how good twelve would be though. In all well, yeah, it'd be amazing. Imagine how much. You can't do better than it, Phil. <laughs> you can't. We, we, we beat Manchester City at home. We'd be at least five points out of Manchester City, which would be absolutely fantastic. And then it's just, and then it's just your own. It, it's it's the it, it's your the mental pressure you put on yourself then for the for the for yeah. the run of easier games. But it would be a nice position to be in to think you know. Well, well let's not mess this up now. Mm. You know, that's a nicer position to think, to be in the trying to make up ground. Ultimately, if we get eight, we'll all be very happy. I think because it'll mean. Two draws, two wins, still undefeated. The head to heads are really no important. ground with City over the course of the, the period. You've lost no ground with Spurs probably over the course of the period. So yeah, it's the head to heads are really important, especially City and Chelsea. I think because I see those two being 
going going long, longer as a league challenge than I do Tottenham. I think they'll, Tottenham might blow themselves out and they'll still get a lot of points. Um, so yeah, they're, 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 and obviously home games. We want to be winning all of our home games. So we don't lose at Anfield either. Which no, is there's there's some combination of the, all of those factors means that I think it's um, you know seven, seven or eight or, or more would be great. Seven or eight or more. Uh, Champions League hopefully calm down. Liverpool looking in control of the group and uh, let's get to the quarterfinals of the League Cup and then we can have a big argument about it. <laughs> uh, really really pleased that Phil, Adam, and John joined us for this today and our partners Red Pepper 2018 and the fact that I didn't die throughout uh, that feels really, as well. Really, it was really close to be fair. It's it's really uh, it's interesting to me that, that Neil's body has timed it's cold for the international break yeah. that is commitment isn't yeah. it like how does yeah. it know it, yeah. it's, it just, just the level it just it doesn't tolerate uh, it doesn't tolerate any weakness during the league season <laughs> it, need, it needs Saturday Wednesday Saturday Wednesday it really does imagine, imagine how fit I'll be in November <laughs> When I come read them back, uh, moving right right the way forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much to you for listening as well. Uh, and do check out Moment in Time, it is the business.